desert's world. Come on, dude. But it could fill me.
Ain't nobody can tell what the weather's going to do. Because I looked at the weather last weekend, and when I looked at it, it said it was going to be pretty much Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with a, a less than a 30% chance of rain Thursday, and then Friday was going to be pretty, and Saturday, anybody see the monsoon yesterday? Anybody get caught out in the hailstorm at the football game yesterday? So this week I was looking at that, and I know how the weather is, and I do not, I do not trust the weather. I've got, I've got three weather apps on my phone, and all three get something different. I'm going to, come to I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not being mean. They all liars. They don't know what they're talking about, whatever they're thinking, they don't know what. So this week, I, I, I was trying to get some hay cut, and the first part of the week, the very first part of the week, I had a breakdown. And so I, 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 there's a pretty quick fix, and, I, and if you farm any, you learn how to be a mechanic, you learn how to be a welder, you learn how to run a torch, you learn, you learn how to wire, you learn, you learn it all real quick, or you will be stranded sitting out somewhere. So this week, Monday, I went and I cut all the hay. I cut about 60-something acres of hay Monday. Cut it off. So thick. I mean, it was so thick that I was so proud. And Brother Wesley and I worked all week on that, and I cut that, and so helped me, it started to rain a little bit Tuesday. So I thought, well, Tuesday it's going to rain, so I see it's going to rain, so hallelujah for the rain, glory, thank you, Jesus, for the rain, we need the rain. I thought about praise for the lifestyle. Get you back everybody with me now. I'll get to this text in just a moment. So here we are Tuesday, and so I've got a tether, and a, well, if you don't know what a tether is, a tether is a machine that hooks behind the tractor, and you go out through the field, and when the hay is cut down, well, Charles knows what it is, and it begins to spin, and it Plus uh, the hay, and it makes it dry quicker, and gives it a more thorough dry. And mine is really old, and the teeth were bad on it, so I went to Tennessee. And as I was in Tennessee, I went to buy some, some teeth for the thing. First place I went to, they didn't have any, and I started to panic just a little bit. Maybe. I started to panic. Now, after about three places I went to, I found some that had exactly what I needed. And so I stopped at a place of business to eat. When I stopped at this place of business to eat, I was sitting in a booth in the middle of the day all by myself. And this person came in that I hadn't seen in 30 years, walked in the 20 years, probably walked in the door. And he said, Pastor Bruce, how are you? And I said, I am doing good. Thank you, Jesus. My hands were a little bit oily and greasy from working. I'm all on my clothes, baby some swell. He said, you look like you've been hard at it. I said, I've been out working in the hayfield today trying to get this window of opportunity done. And about that time the, one, of the, one of the ladies that works there, she looked at me and she said, I didn't know you were a pastor. I said, oh yes, I've been a pastor for a lot of years. Then one of the owners spoke up and said, oh yeah. said, I've been watching him for years and he don't know it. But I have seen him when he's went through the hardest heartbreaks and, and, and she just began to sing my praises. She said, I have one. And, I, and I'm sitting there and I guess my chin's dropped because I really did not realize that these people were watching me. And she said, I have watched him go through heartache and heartbreak and heart time. And she said, and everything that he's gone through, he's always held his head up and he's always praised the Lord. And I have kept my eye on him because of the way he praises the Lord. Because I'm about to go somewhere with you. I'm not saying that at all. But all of a sudden, I was sitting there and I thought, well, Lord, you know, people are watching my life. I really don't realize who is somebody from another town lives in a different state, owns a business, and I don't go into a whole lot. But I go in some, but they are watching me. And, they, and, and so she began to give a testimony, the, the owner about, or part owner, about the, the, the praises of God. So here I am on Tuesday and I'm feeling pretty good and I've got my parts and I'm coming out of the place and I go up and I start to tether the hay and I tether hay all day till 9 o'clock on Tuesday. Wednesday I try to bail and my bailer breaks down. And I fix it. And I get part of it bailed. And I'm still praising the Lord. Now let me stop right here and give you a little story that I shared, I think, with Sister Allison this week. There was a preacher that moved into a new town. And when he moved into this new town, it was a small community, and he didn't even have an automobile, but he had a bicycle, and he was out riding around checking 
the local people and seeing who we got visiting that might come to church. And as he was riding around on his bicycle, Brother Bryson, he noticed this little boy, little mean boy that's in the community, had a lawnmower and he was pushing the lawnmower out and he put a for sale sign on the lawnmower. And so the preacher said, I really need a lawnmower. I moved into a new house. I'm in a new community. I don't have a lawnmower. I don't know anybody. I can walk everywhere I need to go. So he pulled up and he asked the little boy, he said, I see you got the lawnmower for sale. What are you asking for? The little boy said, I'll take $50. And the preacher said, well, I really don't have $50, but I will trade you this bicycle for the lawnmower. And the little boy looked around at the bicycle. Looked at the other side. He said, well, it looks like it's a pretty good bicycle. He said, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. It's almost good. And the preacher said, does a lawnmower run? Oh, yeah, I'm going to ask him that today. He said, well, how would you trade? And the boy said, well, I'll just trade straight up with you. I'll swap you the lawnmower for the last And the preacher thought, well, that's a pretty good deal. So he grabbed the lawnmower and he began to pull it back to his house. And the boy got on the bus and began to ride. About two hours later, the preacher come pulling back the lawnmower. And he said, son, I traded you a good bicycle for a lawnmower that will not start. And I have started and I have cranked and I have cranked and I have cranked and this thing will not start. And the boy said, oh, I forgot to tell you, preacher. That is a lawnmower that you have to cuss to make it start. <laughs> and the preacher said, son, I don't cuss. I haven't cussed in years. Actually, I have forgotten how to cuss. And the boy looked at him and said, Keep pulling the rope and it'll come to you. <laughs> now, you might say, Well, preacher, let me tell you something. We live in a life that is full of frustration. We live in a life where, where everything's not coming up daisies and roses and everything is not all good. So your lifestyle must emulate who you are in Christ. Now you me my You see, this week I've done a lot of pulling on the rope. This week I, 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 I'm in the middle of the field trying to get hay up in the middle of the field and, and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to maintain my composure and I'm trying and I'm telling you, I'm getting frustrated. Anybody of you? I'm getting pretty much because Friday when I'm going around the field, going around the field, going around the field, before I, I started, I stopped my nap and I thought, well, it changed. are getting pretty bad on that. Uh, it's got three different drive chains on the belt. So I got some master links for uh, Saturday morning. I'm up there and I've got some. I just got to get this done. I know I, if I can get this room field done, I will be pleased. I got extra to do. But God just kept me to get this field done. And I'm allowed to, I'm going around and around and around the field and all of a sudden the chain breaks on it. I think, well, that's no big deal. I, I don't care the chain go. I got a link in there. So I get outside. I fix it, put it back together. I start bailing again. A few minutes, the chain breaks again. <laughs> I got it, it's all right. I got another link. I put another link in it. I start around the field, start on. The next thing I know, another chain breaks. I mean, but well, I got another link. I put that link in it. I'm going around the field. Next thing I know, another chain breaks. This time when it breaks, it loses a piece out of it. Now help me. Just a little bitty tiny piece. I'm mean, about the size of the top of an ink pen. And I'm thinking, man, I can't find that. I'm done. I'm getting frustrated. I'm, I'm out there and I'm not walking around. And I'm, I'm even had a magnet kind of feeling around trying to find it. A 40 acre field. I'm just looking. All of a sudden I see it about from here to Pastor Joss. I see it. I don't have the world. I see that thing. It's just the mercy of God. I go over and get it, put it on. I start going again. And the chain breaks again. I get out of the tractor. Sweats are running off on me. My hands are bleeding. I got splinters and everything in my head. And I hear a voice say in my head, Where's your praise now? There ain't nobody around. There ain't nobody within no distance of you. You can say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. And you know what I did? All of a sudden, if anybody saw me, they'd have thought I was crazy. Because I looked it up my head. And I 
see them. I, I want to be a pastor and a preacher that's real. I'm going to give it to you straight. It ain't always easy. You're going to struggle. It ain't always going to be sunshines and roses and daisies. Sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes we used to, I used to sing a song. I'll praise you through the good times. And I praise you through the bad. Oh, with you, I'll stand up and say, Lord, I know we grow through our trials. And sometimes they're hard to bear. I like this one. But it don't matter what happens, I still praise you. The writer of Psalms 113 understood this. See, as the writer begins to share with us, let me, let me quickly move through this. The writer begins to share, he says, shout praises to the Lord. Shout praises. See, the first five verses in this text, there's nine verses, and the first five verses lets us know that God is present Oh, somebody help me now. Amen. That, that God, and, and, and He's always infinitely, infinitely light. He's always, it says, let me read it to you. Praise ye the Lord. Let me read the first five verses. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from the time forth and forevermore. From the, right, oh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Yeah. Are you with me this morning? Who is like unto the Lord God who dwelleth on high? There's nobody. See, the first five verses gives us the preeminence of God. That there is none like God. Let me preach to you this morning. It doesn't matter if the pastor gets you saved there or not. God is still God. It doesn't matter if the prayer that I pray is answered. God is still God. It doesn't matter if I pray. It doesn't matter if I pray. God. I don't praise him because he saved me. I praise him because he's God. I don't praise him because he healed me. I praise him because he's God. I don't praise him because I got finances. I praise him because he's God. I don't praise him because I've been blessed. I praise him because he's God. See, that's what we've done wrong for so long. We only praise him when everything goes good. We're going to praise Him when everything's fine with me. See, I didn't tell you the whole story. Everything I had broke down this week. I was going to cross the field with rake on the back of the hay rake on the back of the truck. I'm just driving along. I've got worship music going on in my ear, and I'm praising the Lord. And I felt like, I thought, well, man, this tractor feels like it's going off a good, and I turn to look, ain't got no rake, it's gone. <laughs> I mean, I'm plumbed down. I turn around and go back and look for it. And I see it sitting there. I went, praise God. I just turned around and my back. You think I'm getting it? I'm telling you the truth. I'm running through the field. My tractor says it's got almost half a tank of gas and it dies. Fuel. I'm thinking, well, that's stupid. This thing, what in the world's going on? This thing, they got 400 errors on. Why in the world is dying? Well, it's dying because the gun gauge don't work and it's out of fuel. <laughs> So I walk from one side of the farm to the other side, get the truck, drive the truck back over, fill it back up. You know what I'm doing? I'm still praising. Yeah. 
Amen. I'm still lifting my hands and praising the Lord. I, the next thing I know, I got to take the truck back on the other side and walk all the way back. Get another truck, come all the way back. Cause I'm, I'm talking, I got my time in this week. My watch, it gets so funny. I got one of them, them smart watches, one of my watches. And this week, every day, it says, You broke your record of working out. <laughs> I won't take that dumb thing and throw it from across the pond. <laughs> yeah, I've worked out. I sweated. I sweated like a ball of new wood. I've got splinters and I've got aches and pains and I've got hay all over me and everything else. And I'm out there and I'm, I'm, I'm all by myself every day out there working and doing it. And some friends of mine come by and the, the lady looked at me and she said, You look like you're hungry. I said, well, I ain't late since this moment. <laughs> She said, you mean you ain't stopped? I said, I ain't got time stopping. She said, you need to eat. I said, I'm good. I've got 12 bottles of water. I got the last one. I got 13 bottles. I got the last one in the two. Jake, I'm on the truck and I'm going to bring it when you leave. Well, about 9 o'clock, they pulled in there and they had that big old hamburger and bottles with a big old bag of fries and a big old Coke. And I looked at it and I said, I just love y'all. <laughs> she said, I knew really he was hungry. Because she's grouchy. <laughs> well, I ain't grouchy. They pulled up, they wanted to talk. I said, if y'all ain't got a jacket, get out of here. I got stuff to do. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. But you're going to get me an ice cream. You know, I got stuff to do. Get that truck driving on the farm. I got stuff to do. I'm going to be nosy. That's just about what I said. I ain't got time. I love you. Appreciate you. I'm sitting and watch me go around in circles. But I ain't stopping. I've got a window of opportunity. See, that's what the writer says. God is the God of the most high. And he will bless you simply because he is God. See, we live in this step time. I'm, I'm, I'm wide enough. When the devil wants to make you think that you are unworthy. Here's what the Lord spoke to me of the this morning. The devil wants you to think that you don't, you're not worthy of God's blessings. But you've done too much. You failed too much. You slipped up too much. You're like the kid with a lot more. You said too many words. God does not bless you on, based on your merit. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. And it's not to hurt your feelings. But you don't deserve it. No matter how good you are. No matter how perfect that you think you live. You don't deserve it. This week, when that chain broke the last time, the, the, the fifth time, it broke four times, and the fifth time, it, when it come apart again at a different link, and I walked out there, and I opened up the door, Pastor Josh, and I looked at the chain, it's laying on, halfway on the ground. And I'm just being honest with you. I was so frustrated. And I know it may seem simple, stupid stuff to you guys, but I wanted to get this done. I wanted this off my plate. I didn't want, I've got other stuff I need to be doing. And I needed this thing. When I saw that chain on, on, the, on the, the ground, and I knelt down, I got down on my knee like this, and I reached in there and I started pulling on the chain, and it was hot from running around the cars, and it was hot. And I gave it a yank and it hit the ground. And when it hit the ground, I looked at it. You know what I done? I didn't cuss it. I lifted up my hands. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that even though I know that I am not, everything's closed. It's after 6 o'clock. Everything is closed. And I know I can't get the part to fix this. I thank you because it doesn't matter that you are still God and I'm not going to let that. This may seem simple, but I believe I'm talking to somebody today. This, 
this thing. It doesn't matter. You are still God. You are still in control. And if I don't get it today, I'll get it Monday. And if I don't get it this Monday, I'll get it the next Monday. Because I am not going to let this get me down. Because I know that you are still God. Amen. So I walk around the field like this. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm on top of a hill. I'm on top of a hill. At that time, I hear a car, and I'm thinking, I'm still crazy. At that time, I hear a horn. And I turn around and look, and it's my neighbor going down the road. My neighbor says, Praise the Lord, preacher! <laughs> Did you get it? You get it. Let me encourage you today. It's a coming time. In Psalms 113. The first four verses let us know that God is infinitely high. The first five verses. The, the fifth verse brings it to a nutshell. It says, Who is like to the Lord our God? To draw the problem. Somebody say, Infinitely high. It's infinitely high. The last four verses tells us that our God is infinitely high. Verse 5, he's high and lifted up. The last four, he's close beside me. Let me read it to you. The last four verses. Who humbleth himself to the holy things that are in heaven and in earth. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lift, lifteth the needy out of the dungeon. That they may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and be joyful and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise you, Lord. He gives us a couple examples there. He gives an example of the woman that's broken and destitute. Busted and disgusted. That may be you today. I, I believe the Lord is dealing right now with some hearts. That may be you today. You may be. When I say busted and disgusted, I, I, you've got a nice home, you've got a nice vehicle, you've got a good job, you have a beautiful family. But you're still broke. Because there's something missing. You're still broke because you don't have that relationship with God. He says he takes that person, he even gives the analogy on a dung hill. We know what that is. It's a pile of urine. That stinks. Then he gives the analogy of a woman that's married that does not have any child, any children, but she keeps her faith. God blesses her. She has children. She has a home. It goes down to praise. It's not what we do with our mouth. It's what we do with our life. Every morning when I get up, this is my prayer. And I'm going to shoot straight with you. I feel that it often. Every morning when I get up, my prayer is, God, let my life bring you honor today. Let someone, without me saying a word, 
Let someone see you in me simply by who I am. Now you're in this room, would you just bow your heads with me right now? If you're that dad sitting there or that mom. You need to make it, you want to make it commitment. You, you've done all you think you can do in your life and you can